Okay, the topics today are going to be amazing. Two good friends, Alan North is here. He's the guy who invented Keto Med. By the way, I've been skipping lunch and taking a scoop of Keto Med for lunch. Tremendous, he's gonna talk about that. Uh, then I'm gonna teach about drug resistant yeast. They say to starve them. Finally, they're saying some of the right things, but I think they're wrong on this. Dr. John Ganino joins us. He's gonna be talking about what a problem fungus is in his medical practice, as it is in all doctors, only he realizes it. All that and more on this, Know the Cause. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists, and soon you too will know the cause. Probably the easiest five or ten minutes I'll ever spend with a dear friend of 31, 31 years. 31 years. You were 17 years old. Is it okay you, if I tell the audience you used to have a mustache? I used to have a big, like a Fu Manchu yeah. mustache. You looked like Tom Selleck. And, and dark hair, right? That's and right. Dark <laughs> hair. Thank you. I'll accept all those compliments. Um, Alan, you know, we became friends a long time ago, his mom, his brothers, and so forth. And uh, Alan came up to me five years ago. You lead that conversation because what I saw was still that little boy who was hungry for information. I want to be fit, Doug. You had gained a lot of weight. Here's a picture of you, you know, back. Uh, yeah. Some, uh, just, this is only about two years ago. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah. fell into the trap also of the American, the standard American diet and gained a lot of weight. I can't believe A lot that of body you. fat, slowed down the metabolism. And then all, and then with that, you know, you get the, the metabolic syndrome and, and the me metabolism just breaks down and it's almost like a cascade of neg negative events of, uh, in terms of your health. And you told me. Doug, I believe in this keto. And then you brought in these products and you sat them on the desk and we began to look at them, look at right. the labels. Okay, so they need some work. The true keto diet, ketogenic diet, they weren't. What he set out to develop, it took him three years and a lot of money, was something called Keto Med, the real deal. The best way to explain real keto is that one of the best things that people can do, as you know, Doug, one of the best things you can do for health is, is, is to fast. That's why you keep hearing about intermittent fasting. And the problem with intermittent fasting, even though it provides a lot of benefits, you can't sustain that mm -hmm. um, because it's basically starvation. So the ketogenic diet became popular because it, it's a healthy diet that mimics starvation. But unfortunately, in the world of marketing, it's gotten lost in translation. Yeah. And now you have different versions of keto. Right. You have dirty keto. You have clean keto. You showed me a, before I get to that, I want to talk about dirty and clean. You showed me a website the other day of someone who has keto supplements, keto MCT fats, keto enzymes, keto, the, and one of the, uh, people call in and say, wow, that's $150, but they're going to spend $250, $350 on this and not even get what's in that. Keto. Right, because it's it's become a huge marketing buzzword. It's keto everything. They're putting the, the four-letter keto word on everything, yep. even though they ha it has it might not have, have anything to do with keto. Yep. And so you you have you have these these high fat diets, but just because it's a high fat diet and it technically is is it, you know falls under the the, the the parameters of keto doesn't mean that it's healthy keto. It might be dirty keto, meaning dirty keto is is going through a fast food restaurant, ordering the breakfast sandwich just without the bun. You get the cheese, you get the eggs, you get the bacon. You don't get the you don't get the the, the bread, right. or and the, or you go to a convenience store and you get one of those frozen drinks that's sugar free. And and when you do dirty keto like that, or just constant lard and 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 bacon and and uh, 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 pork rinds. Yes, it's high in fat. Yes, it's low in carb. Yes, it technically is keto but not clean keto. How many times have you heard experts talk about, don't go on a keto diet, you can't even eat vegetables on a keto diet. Right, right. Not true, not true at all. On a clean keto diet, you could have any leafy green vegetable, broccoli, kale, green beans, you name it. If it's green, avocados, that's a, that's a healthy fat. Olive oils, coconut oils, fresh creams, grass-fed meats, that's clean keto. Dirty keto is just a bunch of high fat, low carb junk. It's almost like the definition of I, I ate something that was, that was made in nature and plant based, 
potato chips are plant-based yep. doesn't mean yep. that it's healthy. <laughs> um, so there's different definitions. And, and so when you embark on keto, the, 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 the definition of the true sense of the word is clean keto. Focus on clean keto, and that's what Keto Med is based on. Just before we go to this break, and I'll keep Alan around another five minutes uh, because there's so many questions to answer. The, uh, the MCT oil, yeah. there's even different kinds. So if it says MCT oil, if it says all natural, right. if it says keto, be careful. MCT oils are different. This is where, again, all products are not the same. You have to look at the labels, read labels, understand the labels. And you're right, Doug, not just like all protein, all vitamins, some, there's natural vitamins, there's synthetic vitamins. Yeah. Not all MCTs are the same. There's four different kinds. You, 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 you hear them with the word acid, crap, uh, mm -hmm. uh, caproic, capric, yep. lauric, and caprylic, caprylic being the most important one. Yep, and we're gonna expound on that when we get back from this short break. C8, what is C8? Is it in Keto Med? Is it in other products? We'll be right back with Alan. This is a story about a little engine that could. Four or five years ago, Alan sat down with me and said, hey Doug, I would love to follow a keto diet. I read all about the big hospital 90 years ago. They were feeding kids butter and whipped cream and fats, and they were recovering from their epilepsy. I would love to do it, but look, and he lays these products on my desk. Well, we looked at them with a microscope uh, or with a magnifying glass, and we said, wow, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. Peanut oil and other, you know, is that really keto? So when we left the last segment, we were talking about the quality of your product. And let me just show you another question you shot to us. With the global popularity of the ketogenic diet and dozens of keto products on the market, what makes Keto Med different from all the other ketogenic products? And I think that's a good jump off yeah. on just the MCT oils. It's the formulation. It's the ingredient. The one thing is ingredients matter, labels matter, potency matters, and the things that should not be in a ketogenic product matter. Remember, ketogenic is a precise definition, but it's gotten lost in translation. When I look at the products out there, and keto is a big buzzword, and there's so many different products. You need to buy separate keto MCT oil. You need to buy separate so-called keto protein, separate so-called keto vitamins and enzymes and amino and separate amino acids or and, not and separate exogenous ketones or how about getting all of it in one i can't believe when i go on websites you got to buy there this and it's only 39.95 but you got to add this then you got to add this and you add it up here at 300 340 dollars and one website says look if you go on vacation for seven days you just don't eat well swallow these keto makers what I, if you I, look at the top keto brands out there and you buy all of the products that you supposedly need, you would be spending in excess of $500 a month. And there's no need. This is, this is the first complete, real, ketogenic nutraceutical drink that's ketogenic, that's antifungal, that's formulated properly. You, the, 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 when, you're, when you're dealing with a keto formula, there really is no room for mistakes. There are certain ingredients that disqualify it from being truly scientifically ketogenic. Mm -hmm. For example, when, 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 when this was first made, not just because it's high fat, that doesn't mean that all fats will do. Right. Um, what, what, why do people go on a keto diet? They do it to feel better, to, 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 to help their, their, their metabolism. So why would you take oils that promote inflammation, like canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, those are the wrong types of fats. But yet many of these keto products have those in them. Many of those keto products are not only have those types of oils in them, they're, they're not ratioed properly. In other words, if, it, if it, it, this is something that a lot, a lot of the formulators are not getting is that if the, if the diet is not high enough in the right kind of fat and it's too high in the wrong kind of protein, that that protein will actually react like a carbohydrate. If you ingest too much protein, it will literally react like a carbohydrate, knock you out of ketosis, negate the whole ketone benefit. So it has to be formulated correctly. This has everything you need in it, the right fats, all MCTs, the right grass-fed clean protein, no hormones, no mm. steroids, no Ralgro, no Xeranol, clean, no artificial colors, sweeteners. Do you worry? Okay, so let me touch on this for 10 seconds. Someone wrote to you and said, yeah, it has milk in it. I'm not gonna do that. Milk isn't on the Kaufman diet. But explain the whey isolates instead of the milk. 
Yes, whey, when, you're, when you look at something like whey protein isolate, that, that, it, that literally makes up 0.6% of milk. It's been extracted, enzymatically separated from milk. You definitely want to avoid milk, and you definitely want to avoid conventional milk for optimal health. Mm -hmm. But when those whey protein isolates are extracted, there's no longer lactose, there's no longer the milk fats, there's no longer the milk sugar, which is lactose. Yep. Okay, right. so, and then, and then if it's done properly, it's grass fed, it's clean, it's isolated, then it doesn't, it should not have antibiotics or Ralgro or hormones and or steroids. And you did that. I, I went through every step of this. That's all taken quickly. care of. I found other keto products and health food stores that are less expensive and I'm always tempted to try them. I remember when this came in on your voicemail. Right. Why is keto med so expensive? I think we just talked about that. The potency and the purity. It's got 20 grams of MCTs and it's got the right kind of MCTs, the caprylic acid. Yeah, Alan North, thank you so much. I remember the days from its inception, from Alan sitting down with me and complaining, this is all that's out there. And a lot of it wasn't good. What did he do? He took 36 months and a lot of money and developed his own product that is keto friendly. Whether you're using a scoop instead of lunch or using it a couple times a day, work with a doctor and try this product. Great, great product, thank you. Uh, friends, welcome back. Thank you for being with me today. This is a fascinating book, The Manual of Clinical Mycology. 1944, five doctors uh, from Duke University published this book. And on page 148, if you want to treat yeast infections, right, you've got to put the patient on a low carbohydrate diet. 1944. Shh. They really said that. Where is all this low carbohydrate diet gone? Now meds, 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 procedures, meds, 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 okay? By the way, look at this. This is a serious fungal infection. Look at that. Of the face, nose, ears, eyes, etc. It's really, it's an old, old medical textbook and they talked about these things. So today, I'm gonna update you on modern science. Drug resistant infections. Finally, they're saying if you can't beat them, starve them. That's the real headline science finds. If you can't beat them, starve them. I'm jumping up and down at home, my poor wife. She said, what's going on? University of Buffalo, folks, researchers discovered that to treat Candida albicans infection, it should be starved, okay? You with me? 70 years ago, said the same thing in this book. Oh no, but they're not talking about starving it of carbohydrates. That would be logical, okay? Here's how far our science has gone. Starve yeast of food? No, no. Starve yeast of iron. Human and fungal cells require iron for many uh, different metabolic pathways, including transport oxygen, right? Our cells adapt to some iron, but protect us from too much iron. Using mice with oral yeast infections, like candida thrush, the researchers found that by using an existing drug for blood disorders, oral iron, iron levels decreased and slowed yeast growth. I would have expected that 75 years ago. Today, I'd expect them to say, D diet. Ain't gonna happen, folks. If all you own is a hammer, then the whole world looks like a nail. Doctors don't learn about diet and yeast or mycology. They don't learn what's in that 75-year-old medical book in medical school. You want my take on all of this? I'm in love with the headline, drug-resistant infections. If you can't beat them, starve them, science finds, scientists finds, which I think is great. But yeast cells require so much more than iron starvation alone. They thrive on foods in your diet. Why not starve the yeast instead of taking iron out of its way? Answer, there's a drug, Doug. Oh, we, we're not selling much of the drug, but boy, if we put patients with candida, vaginal yeast, oral thrush, mucus, you know, mucus membrane thrush, skin uh, yeast, if we put them on that drug, sales would take off. And we met with a company, and they're willing to, oh. It's so frustrating to know the cause, okay? Look at this, what are carbohydrates, Doug? What are we doing to feed these yeasts? Well, there's bread and rice and wheat and pasta and soda pop and pastries, fruit juices, beer, etc. You're beginning to see what's unraveling here is, oh my gosh, you mean once we have a little bit of perleche, you know, that white stuff that grows in the corner of your mouth, or once we have a little yeast, ringworm growing on our skin, or seborrheic dermatitis, dandruff, which is yeast-driven, 
You mean if I drink beer or wine or eat pasta or bread, that feeds it? Yes, and it's not the iron that feeds it. It's the food that feeds it. How I wish today's doctors knew this. Here's the good news. I'm teaching a lot of them. Before year's end, I'll teach another thousand doctors about this. And that's really good. Because of that thousand, five percent, fifty of them might go home and say, we're going to put you on a different kind of a diet, okay? Most medical researchers take existing medical problems and look for chemicals not to treat, not to cure, but to manage them. If you have yeast problems, I agree that starving them works. But more than just iron, starve them of carbohydrates in your diet that have been feeding the yeast perhaps all of your life. That's what it boils down to, friends. It really does. It boils down to <clears throat> if I had any disorder, any autoimmune problem, if I had cancer, I would look at the offending agents as coming directly through my air supply, something I'm with all the time. Do I have an aspergillus or a penicillium or a FOMA problem in my air ducts? And next, my diet. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always have oral thrush. Change needs to be considered. Currently, dietary change isn't offered, but don't worry, they're on to brand new medications that they can put you on. Thank you. Your doctor has told you to walk. God bless him. Walking as we age is so good for us, folks. They say that better than calcium for your bones is walking, is exercising. So you're pushing 60, 65, 70, and you want to speed that up a little bit. Do you speed up your walk? You can do that, right? Or you can try this. I simply call this climbing the stairs, then turning around and going back down the stairs. And you do this a few times, and that heart rate is gonna go up. And you're gonna sleep like a baby, and you're gonna realize that along with all the problems in life comes exercise. That you're not picking up the kids anymore, right? You're not taking them to school and driving home and trying to exercise and eat well. This is a different time in our lives for many of us but you must keep the exercise up. I'll never forget my college test, anatomy and physiology, a one-year course. The last question, we all circulated tables, what's this muscle, what's this joint, etc. The professor said, what have you learned during this year about the musculoskeletal system in the human body? Two words only. You know what it was? It moves. And the older we get, the more important it becomes that you do the same thing. If that's all the exercise you're getting, but you're following the Kaufman diet, you need to think this through. A Little bit of exercise every day, good supplements, good diet. Watch how you sleep, watch your mood, how it improves, and just watch yourself get better and better and feel better and better. Here's a word for you as we jump off on this segment, hepatotoxicity. Thank you for joining us, we'll see you next, no. <laughs> hepatotoxicity, hepato, liver, poison, right? So folks, when a doctor prescribes some of these, they're called azole drugs, itraconazole, fluconazole, diflucan, spornox, they filter entire, or they filter through the liver, and the liver can become poisoned by the action of the drug itself. Joining me right now is a good buddy of mine, Dr. John Ganino, who's out here locally near the Dallas area. Um, and he probably is the doctor, since all the doctors I worked with are gone now, that prescribes more antifungal drugs than anyone. So question, mm -hmm. we'll start off this way. Have, how many cases of hepatotoxicity have you seen? Zero. Okay, same nice here. Statin, same here. and Lamisil. Rizziofulvin, Spornox, Difluconz, the one you mentioned, yep. zero, not a single one. Wow, you prescribed Rizziofulvin? Sometimes it really does come in handy. Yeah, absolutely. The older generation, the Nizorol, sometimes sure. they're toxic, but right. they really come in handy. You and I have talked about this. Um, fungus is a problem. You see fungus as often as ever, any doctor does, but you address fungus. You talk about the toxic load when a patient comes in to see you. Mm -hmm. Be they blepharospasms, eye twitches, migraines, gout. 
he looks at the body as, okay, there's something off there. Instead of giving you a drug that will uh, reply every two to six hours for the rest of your life, don't you want to know the cause? That's what his office digs in. Uh, you do glutathione IVs. How important is that for the liver? I it's mean, tremendous. I mean, we've actually, we do uh, take care of a number of people with sick livers and we've never had a single person, not a single one, I'm talking about stage four cancer, whatever, with elevated liver function that we haven't been able to help. It's like called batting a thousand. How does the body become so toxic? Again, uh, it's a country that burns 19,000 gallons of gasoline in one second, uh, so it's in the air. Uh, you guys probably, or a lot of you probably know because you're, you're pretty educated that, uh, you know, 10% of the United States groundwater uh, exceeds healthy levels for cadmium or arsenic or both, so it's in our groundwater. Um, it's in the food we eat, preservatives and things like that. And again, I think, Doug, a thing that's really being missed uh, by a, a, lar a large part of the doctors is this whole MTHFR connection, you know, mm. this the genetic connection uh, to not be able to detox very well. Um, and so if you don't know about that and you're not supporting that enzyme at the same time that you're getting coached up on detox, you really, I mean, you're on the cancer trail. I mean, you're, it's just a matter of time. What induces that mutation? I you mean, know, it's a, it's a great question and I don't know, but I, I would just, again, probably go with, uh, with things that, um, you know, just mess up the body in general, which are acid, pH, and toxins primarily. And of course, mycotoxins could be one of those toxins. Yeah. Question before I let you go sure. today. Some of the people I have referred to you, or our office has referred to you, say you address something called forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Jump off on that. Yeah, I, you know, again, I, the, the older I get on, in, in this life, uh, I, I think it's, it's getting more simple. It's a, I remember being a kid in a stream, and you would turn over a rock to see if there's a, you know, a, a polywog underneath there, and it, it would be a little cloudy for a while, but the current of the stream would carry it past, and eventually you could see the little guy and get down there and get him. And to me, it, it's, it's becoming really simple now. Uh, love everybody all the time. Forgive everybody all the time. I mean, my hero is Dr. Martin Luther King. And he said, forgiveness is not an occasional act. Forgiveness is a permanent attitude. If you're able to get there, that's where that, that's where that healing happens up in there. All those love, joy, compassion states, that's where, it's, that's where it's at. And that's what we witness in our office. Their office is truly amazing. If you'd like to come see him, he's near the Dallas area. Fly into DFW or Love Airport and uh, get on over to see him. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. Thanks for having me. Good day. Hey folks, thank you so much, Alan North, for coming in today and continuing our education on how to eat right. Ketogenic is a great idea. This is, there's Keto Mint. By the way, half a scoop of that in your coffee in the morning as a cream substitute, Mwah, it tastes so good. Uh, thank you also for learning about drug-resistant yeast. Starve them of iron or starve them of food? That would be my take. And finally, thanks to Dr. John Ganino, uh, fungus. It's a huge problem, folks. Thanks for being with us today. God bless you. I'm taking my keto med and I'm out of here.